Hey everyone, Active Learning here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to discuss performance metrics for classification problems in machine learning and deep learning. So let's get right into it. So you might be wondering, what are performance metrics and why do we need them? Well, performance metrics allow us to evaluate our model's performance. And this is necessary because we want to know how well our model is performing, right? So then let's look at the most simple performance metric. Um, the most basic one is called accuracy. And we use accuracy daily, actually. It basically measures how many times our model made a right prediction, right? So for example, if we have 100 input samples and our model made a correct prediction of 90, then our accuracy is just 90%, right? And it's actually fairly simple to calculate. It's simply the number of correct predictions over the total number of examples. And yeah, that's it. Accuracy is very simple. It's the simplest way to measure the quote unquote goodness of our model. And yeah, that's accuracy. So then the question becomes, if we have accuracy, then why do we need other metrics? So is accuracy always the best metric to use for classification problems? Well, the short answer is no. Accuracy works for most classification problems, but for others, we have to consider some cases. So let's consider this scenario, right? Suppose you're diagnosing a medical disease and one in every 100 people get this disease. So without even training our model at all, we can just hard code the output to be negative, right? So basically meaning no disease is found. And our model will still have an accuracy of 99%. So then accuracy isn't the best metric to use, right? Because our model is in fact 99% accurate, but then we just basically hard coded it and then it's still 99% with accuracy, right? So that's probably the, not the best metric to use in this case. So then what do we use? But first let's look at something called confusion matrix, right? Um, oh, I accidentally forgot to animate this one. It, it, it's fine. I'll explain what every one of these means. So don't worry about it. So suppose we're building a classifier to predict whether a patient is healthy or not, right? The expected classifications are either, po either positive basically meaning the patient is sick or negative, um, basically meaning the patient is healthy, right? Okay, and if we run our model a thousand times on 1000 patients and we enter the model's prediction into our confusion matrix, um, this is what we get, right? So it's okay if you don't understand what this is all about yet, I I'll explain. Um, yeah, let's interpret this table together, right? So the top left square is actually called the true positive. It basically means our model predicted true and the patient is indeed sick. So we predicted positive and the patient is positive. So this is a correct prediction, right? This correctly predicted positive. So that is good. Now let's move on to our bottom right square, right? This one is called true negatives, basically meaning that our patient is negative and we predicted negative. So this is again, a correct prediction. Okay, so it basically means that we predicted no and the patient is indeed not sick. So wonderful. Now let's look at the rest square in the bottom left. This square is called the false positives, right? The false positives basically mean that our model predicted positive, but in reality, the patient is negative, right? This is actual and this is predicted. We predicted it to be positive, but in reality, it is negative. So this is a wrong prediction, right? And for the top right square, it is called the false negatives. It basically means that our model 
incorrectly predict the negative while the patient is in reality positive, right? So this could be problematic, right? Can you think of a reason why this can be problematic? Well, think about it, right? If our patient is falsely predicted as negative, right? And we send them home so that they don't have to be taken care of. Then what if they die, right? So it actually matters that we're falsely predicting these as negative, right? So that is bad. We don't want that. Now, let's consider this case. Which mistake would we rather make, right? Mistaking someone as positive and sending them to be checked for disease or two, mistaking someone as negative and sending them home, right? Well, in our case, mistaking someone for positive is better than mistaking someone as negative, right? We don't want to risk anyone's lives. We want to find all the sick people, even if we mistakenly classify some healthy people as sick. So we, we can still check on the healthy people, but if we mistakenly uh, diagnose someone who is sick as not sick, then that might risk their lives, right? But if we are diagnosing some healthy people as sick, we can check their health. And if they're healthy, then we're not risking anyone's lives here, right? So we should consider to a number one more important, right? Okay. Now, a metric that does this, that weighs um, what we just talked about, way number one that's more important is called recall, right? Recall is basically the measure of our model correctly identifying true positive, right? So it's true positive divided by true positive plus false negative, right? So what that basically means is true positive divided by the entire top row of our confusion matrix, right? So in our case, for all the patients who have disease, recall tells us how many we correctly identified as having a disease. So that's what recall does, right? And it's very useful for, um, for our case. Oh, and one more thing. Um, this question we just asked, this is actually a known trade-off called the precision and recall trade-off, right? We talked about recall, but we will talk about precision next, right? This is called the precision recall trade-off. Um, similar, similar to bias and variance trade-off, right? The trade-offs that happen in machine learning and deep learning, okay? So that's just a term that you can know, right? Now let's talk about precision next, right? Precision is basically the ratio between the true positives and all the positives, right? So precision is basically um, the top uh, the top left um, square divided by uh, the entire left column, right? That's what precision is. Very simple, okay? And for our problem, that would be the measure of patients that we correctly identify as having a disease out of all the patients actually having it. So in other words, it tells us how many times the model incorrectly diagnose a healthy patient as positive, right? Or false positive, basically. Okay. Yeah, so that is precision. Now you might be wondering, um, so do we use precision or recall, right? So in order to answer this question, ask yourself another question. So which of the two following false predictions is more consequential, right? Which one has a bigger impact, uh, predicting false negative or predicting false positive, right? So if we care more about false positive, then we should choose precision, right? If we care more about false negative, then we should choose recall. And false negative in our case, right, um, that would be sick patients um, being predicted as not, not sick, right? So false negative, not really negative, right? 
not really positive okay so that's pretty intuitive now let's consider this example right um, if we're building an email spam filter well let's go through the questions um, which one's more important right falsely classifying a non-spam email as spam or uh, falsely classifying a spam email as non-spam right well, we want to filter out all the spam emails, but we don't want to filter out uh, possible important emails that may get lost in this case, right? So in this case, precision is better since we're not necessarily losing the important emails. We're not risking to lose the important emails, right? Okay, so that's just a simple example. Now, what if we want both precision and recall, right? Then we simply get something called the F score. Now, um, in many cases, we want to summarize the performance of a classifier with a single metric that represents both recall and precision. And that's simply what F score is, right? It simply takes the harmonic mean of precision and recall. So this is harmonic mean, right? Two times precision times recall divided by precision plus recall, right? This is the harmonic mean of precision and recall. And F score is good if we want to summarize the performance of a classifier that represents both recall and precision. So what would it be an example that we use this, right? And in our, um, you know, we're classifying patients with disease case, right? If our model is good at predicting false negatives, then we might consider using F score, right? We, we still weigh false positives as more consequential, but since we're good at predicting it, then we might consider using F score so that we don't get as many false positives wrong, right? If we're good at predicting false negatives, right? So that's, that's just the case you can consider, right? So yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, we covered accuracy, recall, precision, and F-score. And we also talked about how to uh, look at a confusion matrix and how to analyze it, right? So yeah, that's pretty much all the classification metrics that you will need for classification problems in machine learning and deep learning. So if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. Bye.